Open your Bible to 2 Kings chapter 2. 2 Kings chapter 2, Amplified Version. You're going to read from 1, you're reading from 1 to 10. Listen. It says, Elijah said to Elisha, he says, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha replied, as the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. Listen, if you also go down the scripture you read, you will realize that when the sons of prophets came to Elisha, they said, do you know that, your, your, that Elijah was, is going to be taken up today? And Elisha answered and said what? He said, he knew. He said, do you know your master will be taken away from you today? Elisha answered and said he knew. Listen, Elisha knew what he wanted, so he did not just serve anybody. He served who he wanted to be like. Elisha knew who he wanted to be like. He did not just choose just anybody. He didn't just submit to anybody. He submitted to who he wanted to be like. Many times people submit out of excitement. You, maybe for example, someone comes to your church and ministers, you love the rhymes, the remas, remalition, out of excitement because you loved what the person was preaching, which is not also bad. But Elisha went beyond and he knew because somebody can preach does not mean that you should submit because you, because you don't want to be like the person. That the person preached a good sermon, is that why you want to submit? Because somebody can preach something nice, I mean, have a large church, have a good business, but what do you want to be like? You need to know what you want to be like for you to know who to serve. You don't just admire to choose who you will serve. You should first of all know who do I want to be like to be able to serve. And there is something you must know about this person to be able to stay there. There is something you must know about the person to be able to stay there. So you must say, and that is why it is serve. So you don't snap who you want to be like, you serve who you want to be like. Because you can, you, you see, what, it, uh, many people want to pray for things they are not ready for. Elisha knew, so he stayed on service. He had to serve Elisha. He serviced the anointing on, Elisha, on Elisha's, Elijah's life. Elisha serviced the anointing on Elijah's life. He says, as long as, your, as God lives and as your soul lives, I will not stay here. I will move. Who do you want to be like? You don't snap it. See? You know, I hear this thing, um, when, when you need a spiritual father, so when you um, submit to a father, it gives you feather to fly. Is it something like that? What's the thing? Tell me, what does it say? It gives you feather to go further. You can have a father and not have the feather to go further. It's not in the father you serve. It's not in the father you choose. It's in who you are servicing. It's not having a spiritual father, because let me tell you something. You can have a mentor that is growing or anointed or have a spiritual father or spiritual mother that is growing and anointed. It does not make you anointed. It does not. Because many people don't know what they should draw from the person. They just get excited and want to be close to the anointed. Nearness to the anointed doesn't make you anointed. That you snap picture with the one that is anointed does not make you. It's not, you don't snap anointing. You service anointing. That you sit with the anointed does not also make you anointed. You know, I want to snap it. You want to take picture. They don't take anointing. They don't snap it. It is service who you want to be like. It is service. If you, saw, if you have a mentor, you'll be tormented. You can have a mentor and be tormented. If you have a mentor, you will not be tormented. You can have a mentor and have many tormentors. Because these are the wrong things you have taken. Because it's not sufficient to have a mentor. People can send you mails. I, I, I want you to mentor me. I want you to do this. You can mentor and mentor and the person is still tormented by the same thing you have told the person. So it, it, it doesn't end that way. You have to service the person you want to be like. I, I read Benny Hinn's books a lot. I can't count the number of books I've read by Benny Hinn. Every of his book, there's hardly any book I've read by Benny Hinn that do not talk about Kachunkuma. I'm going somewhere. I was thinking in my head that because he writes a lot about country Kuma, he sat with her until I stumbled on a sermon on YouTube by Benny Hinn. 
was listening. He said, Auntie Kachikuma Kach died. He never had a one on one with Kachikuma. He didn't snap a picture with her. He didn't sit. He did not even have the opportunity to have a one on one with her. But every time she had a meeting, he would go hours before the meet meeting time. He would be part of everything that is going on. He will stay, he will watch, he will observe, he will, he will do all, he will be there. But he never had a one-on-one -on -one with Katrin Kuma. He told me something. You don't have to sit with the person you want to be like, to be like the person. Let me come again. You don't have to sit with the person you want to be like, to really be like. When I'm talking about sit, it's not, oh, you know what? Pastor Owen is my mentor. Reverend Owen is my father. You don't necessarily have to have a one-on-one -on -one to be like the person. I'm not saying one-on-one -on -one is not good. Get my point. He did not. He, he, if you watch him very closely, you can see the impact of Kachunkuma in his life. But he never had a one-on-one. -on -one. But he will attend her meetings on the regular. When it was time for a funeral, the PA of Kachunkuma told him, he said, you are going to preach. How? And she said a strike. She said a statement. I read it in one of his books. He said she said, he told her, she told him, he said, listen, go and do the things that you have seen Katrin Koma do, Katrin do. Because you can sit and not see nothing. You can stay and not tap anything. When people know what they want to be like, there's something they know about the person they are really serving. The prophets came around. They were so, they, it, it could be that there were other people around Elijah, but there was something Elisha knew. And that's why he was following. For, you must serve on knowledge. You must serve on knowledge. There is something you know about this person that keeps you going. You must serve on knowledge. Don't be interested in, you know, um, when, when, when I take this, you know, I want people to know that this person, they don't need you. See, it is impartation that analysis. You know who you snap with. Can snap and snap and still be at a level. It is impartation that announces you. It's not what you are snapping, who you are snapping with. You must know, you must serve, you, 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 you should not service on nothing, service on something, something you know about the person. And that is why when Elijah told him, he said, please stay here for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. He replied, as the Lord lives and as your soul is, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. He went further again to the next city. He said, stay here. Because you see, service is not easy. There were, there, there were things that could, that could have been on the journey on the road. That probably could have made him quit. This call is for me. But Elijah also knew that he too had a call. So he was moving. He moved alongside his master. Every city that Elijah, Elijah went, he would always turn back and say, you see Elijah, you can't go in. This road is tough. Oh. It's very crooked. You can't follow me. Probably they were even trekking. And maybe like two hours, three hours from this next, from the city to the other city. But Elijah was following. You know why? Because he knew something. So he wanted to draw. He knew something. Don't, don't, don't serve on emptiness. You must serve on knowledge. You, you must serve with knowledge. There's something you must know. And that's why you are there. So he knew that on this particular day, Elijah was going to be taken away. So he knew the only way he would receive is for him to keep on following. So he refused to quit. Servants must not quit, especially when you know why you are there. Number three. Let's go down to verse 10. No, verse 9. Verse 9, quickly. Servants must see to receive. Material number 2. Servants must see. Don't serve without sight. Servants must see to receive. You see, and when they had crossed over, and like, we're talking about takeover. You can't take over without sight. You are seeing nothing, you want to take over. It's not possible. 
It says, and when they had crossed over, Elijah said to Elisha, he says, ask what I shall do for you before I am taken from you. He says, ask what I shall do. Now the question is, what if Elisha had quit in the city before Jordan? He followed through until he got to Jordan. Because he knew that in Jordan, that's when Elijah would be taken away from him. He says, when they are close, Elijah asks, ask what I shall do for you before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. You know why he could ask of this? He saw. He drew. He knew. He has so serviced the relationship. He knew he could handle this. Don't ask for capacity that you cannot handle. He said, when they are close, Elijah, ask what I shall do for you before I am taken. Many of us have quit at a place or at a level where we could have received Probably out of discouragement, out of I'm, I'm easily, I'm tired. A lot of many reasons. I don't have transport fare. I'm poor. I'm this. Many people have quit on a place, on a level where they were, they were meant to receive something. They went back. It may not even be quitting on, it could be quitting on servicing your prayer life. Servicing your word life. You quit on a particular level or you just stay on a particular level and you don't know that at a point there is something that you are meant to receive. So you quit there. You stop at a level. He could have stopped in Bethel. He went further despite everything. He says, ask what I shall do for you before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, please, let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. Let's look at verse 10. He said, this is my point of emphasis. You have asked for a difficult thing. However, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. Listen. I was talking with someone and said, I want to be like Paul, Apostle Paul. Don't laugh. You have asked for a difficult thing. I want to be like the Esther in my generation. I want to be like Deborah. I want to be like Katrin Koma. You won't like the name. When they call you Katrin Koma, you're excited. You put it on Facebook, Instagram. You think it's by putting it. Posting without position, at least you know where. Somebody, somebody see me say, hey, he said, it's just like the Katrin Koma in our generation. I used to bind them in my spirit. Because there is a cost for what you are asking. Are, are you on the journey of the price you need to pay. People can call you titles that you're not living. He says, you have asked for a difficult thing. He didn't ask for one portion. He asked for double portion of Elijah. He could ask for it because he was on that journey. He could ask for it because he had paid the price. He says, you, you asked to be like Apostle Paul. Small depression. You have stopped coming to church. I, I'm due for marriage, but you know, the sisters are not coming. You stop coming to church. You're asking for Apostle Paul's, Apostle Paul's mantle. Mantle that will dismantle you. Small persecution from your family. You can no longer pray. I don't know. You just like, can't pray. I'm down. You know, because the pressure is much. The pressure is much. You want to be like Apostle Paul? You drink more than anything. Apostle Paul did not marry you. But he, was, he lived a life of purity. Since after his conversion, there was nowhere. He said he slept with, he had many wives. So, because some of you marry because you want to stop something. This one did not marry. He was a prison, he was a bond servant. He did not matter whether he perished on the assignment, he was ready. Small, 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 small insult, small, small brokenness. They sacked you, have sacked God. I'm looking for, I'm the Esther in my generation. It's not in your grandma. I'm the Esther in my generation. You are the Esther. He says Esther was willing to perish for people. She fasted for her people. Fast. 
As for only yourself, you are asking, making excuses. She fasted for a nation. She went dry. If I perish, I perish. You need to know what you are really asking for. When there was the dream prayer session, and, 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 and Minister Linda was singing, he said, take over and make some noise. It's not a noise. Can make every joyful and it's good, but you need to know that there is a cost to this thing. When God sometimes tells me some things, how far my life will go, I'll be crying. Because, because, because you know the truth. Some of you are not in the level that you are meant to be for the things that God has really showed you. Esther fasted for her people, it was beyond her. You have dreamt too much, you have had revelation. What price are you paying, even if it will cost you? You have asked for a difficult thing. You are asking for a difficult thing. God told you to wake up every night. He gave you specific instruction on how to be up at particular hours. Small job you don't have. You are no longer, you are sleeping. You know, when I sleep, I sleep away the thoughts. They tell you to fast, even corporate fasting. Your church announces it. That's when you, 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 you give all manner of excuse. That's when you remember doctor's reports. That's why you remember that, oh, I don't, uh, oh, I don't think I can fast. Anyway, um, sir, please, should we break by 12 p.m.? Some of you even break 10 a.m. I don't know what, what kind of fasting that is. There's some of you, even if you even break by 5, you eat the, the, the more than three square meal. All combined. If you see me when I'm taking from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. Don't ask for what you are not ready for. Look at, let's go for that verse 11. And they continued along and talked. Behold, a child of fire and separated it. And Elijah went up to heaven in a wild wind and he received the mantle. Many people ask for difficult things. I'm not against it. It's good to be like it. Because let, let me tell you something. One of the things the Holy Spirit told me that this year in particular, a lot of generals will be retiring. But who will they pass the baton on? My generation is sleeping. I was listening to a prophet yesterday and he said, how that the G.O., his spiritual father, prays for eight hours. In his how many years? One hour, you can't pray. You're on Facebook. You are with your phone, you are surfing Facebook, and it's like, and you are praying. I want God to use you. You are joking. They did not have you, Google has made it easy for that. When you are studying your Bible, you can you can research through Google to get things. Those days of our fathers, it was not easy for them. But yet they will read all manner. They will read all kinds of books. They will do research, they will study. I was listening to my spiritual father yesterday evening. He said how he will sit in the night chewing his Bible, reading up to 17 chapters of the Bible. One verse, you're already sleeping. The Bible is boring for me. And you are asking to take over. He said, oh, I'm coming from Benin City where Idausa, Idausa did things before he died. So my God, God is risen Idausa like me. I was like you. You pass through one pot, which this thing, all they have been in this thing, you already say, hey, hey, what's this? Oh, you're running. He was going to shrines, to burn shrines. What have you put in place? The Bible says, speaking of Cornelius, when he was asking for arms, there was something striking about that scripture. He says, your arms have gone up as in memorial accounts. God is watching. The Bible says he sees in secrets. How many times when you feel sleepy, you'll be in pain, but painfully you will wake up and pray. How many times you will have no food to eat, hungrily you wake up to pray. Because you understand that there is a transference that has to happen to you. There's a transference that has to happen in your generation and you don't want to be left behind. If men like Idaosa if men, they were men like Elisha. It is possible to be like it because they were men of like passions as we are. So if you see me, what have you seen about you? What are you seeing about the person you are saving? Listen, what are you seeing about you? 
What are you seeing about the person you are Because you have to see something about you to see in the next person. So you can know what you are receiving. Because you see, when you see about yourself and you don't see in who you are serving, you can't receive anything. He said, if you see, so shall it be. If you don't see, you will not receive. What are you seeing? So you, it, it's possible that you can ask for something, but if you are not seeing, you can't receive anything. I want to be the next daddy Joe. What are you seeing? What part of him do you want to draw? I want to be the next winner. What part? The Bible says in the book of Joshua, it's God told Joshua, I say, observe to do according to the laws. Everything you have observed, do according to the law. My servant Moses commanded thee. There is something you must observe to receive. Oh, Moses was dead. Joshua had to walk in that part. The question I want to ask you today is when those generals die, are you qualified to receive the baton? It's not enough to snap with snatch and listen to our songs. What are you laboring behind? God sees in secret and you cannot fool him. He will reward according to what he's saying. Come on, rehearse us. They tell you to come because you are not giving the lead singer role. You refuse to come. I think God is sleeping. There are people who trek to come for rehearsal because they know what they are saying. I want to be like this. Hallelujah challenge has been going on. I want to be the next Nathaniel Bassey. Come on 12 a.m. God tells you to wake up to pray for people. You are not there. Do you know what it is to stand there and is praying for nations? Go and see the views. Have you joined the Hallelujah challenge before? The common rehearsals for you to sing five minutes, you are not found, and God will use you. You are joking. You are joking. God is looking for people who, in Bethel, they won't quit. On their way to Jordan, they will not quit. At every level of their life, they are there saying, Lord, as long as you live, I am here. They won't quit on their prayer life. They won't quit on their fasting, on every routine, every instruction he has given. Even if it pains me, I am here. Even if I'm out of work, I am here. Even if I'm out of marriage, I am here. Your status doesn't change the instructions of God. I am here. It's not thing you give up on the faith. It's not thing you stop church. It's not thing you are nowhere to be found. And you want to take over? Taking over is a difficult thing. You need to be ready. The readiness comes when you stay there. You are there. Truth can thing you are observing to do. When I was preparing for this, I was crying. Because you see, these are scriptures that when you read, you review your own life. There are some of us here, God have given specific instructions. You quit. Intercessors, you are interceding nothing. He has asked you to save a particular person. You are sitting. You start excitedly in January. But before the end of January, you have quit. Mm. You have quit. You are no way. The, the, God is looking for you at that point. You are not in your place. You are just there. Who told you that as a student, you can't take over? Who told you? He's my book. He's my book. Let me tell you something. I was sharing with someone very close to me. I told her, I says, listen. If you can stand up to read for exam, you can stand up and study your Bible. It's priority. We have misplaced priorities. I listened to my spiritual father yesterday night. He said how he was in school. He will wake up. He's praying for exam. He will study his Bible because he knew he had an instruction from God. Did he know it would be popular tomorrow? You know, he told me when we told me and my husband when we went to see him, he 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 he, he wasn't doing it for popularity's sake, he was doing it because it was an instruction. It is obedience to instruction that announces men. He will sit down as a student, he will be studying his Bible and reading prayer because why there was a covenant and agreement between him and God at a particular time. He must wake up to study, he must wake up to pray. So even though he has not read his by his book at that point in time, he knew he, he did not, he cannot afford. To miss that time. And so he will study his Bible before he studies his book. What are you prioritizing? How dare you go for weddings? You can go for the next outing. Put a reminder, but when it comes to prayers, you are not there. 
You can be reminded about your next occasion. But when it comes to prayers, you need people to always remind you. Something is wrong with you. You are not ready to take over. You are not ready for a transference. You just want to be there. and people are just, We need to come to a point. This is February. You know what you told God in January? You wrote your journal is full of all manner of resolutions. But yet, nothing seems to be resoluting. We need to wake up. What difficult thing are you asking for? What are you seeing? That you want to arise this morning and say, God, do to me what you need to do to me. Because listen, there are people that God needs to prune. There are people that God needs to chisel. There's something about you. you when you labor, let, let me tell you something. You don't need to suffer. You don't need to stress yourself. I have seen it with me. When I told you something, when my, 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 my coordinator tells me something, I say, I know where it's coming from. Let me tell you something. When you are doing the things of the spirit, there are spiritual things you must never neglect. Who do you want to be like? I'm talking about ministry, eh? but some of you is for business. Who do you want to take after? Have you sat down to ask them, what do you do? Because let me tell you something, the person that you are leading is praying for four hours, you will double your own. Mm. You will double it. Don't sit down there and say, oh, I'm old, that's why I can no longer do the things that I used to do. There are people who are old and they are moving. They are moving, they are still moving, doing prayer work, doing all. So your age is not your restriction, you are just being lazy. Would you cry out to God this morning and say, God, help me. Insist on my generation. Too many Indomies. Too many light-weighted Christians. Too many social media advertisements. Too many snapping with great men and you are not great. Too many leg backs. Too many spiritual negligence. Lord, will you insist on me? Some of you come to church when there's only problem. After the problem is solved, you are no longer found. May I not leave my spots because I quit too much. Any little thing, you are not there. You're not there. God, will you find me at every time at the right place? Can you raise your voice and say, God, insist on me? There are some of you here, you, are, you, are, you, have, you have gone secular. You have gone in the world. And the truth is, the truth about your life is that you have an evangelistic call. You have a prophetic call upon your life. You know it. But you have decided to do what other people are doing. This is not a time to get distracted. Hey, Holy Ghost, insist on me. Insist on me.